Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Lure Painting with Zach Baker. I'm Zach Baker and today I'm going to be showing you a cool little trick you can do for a lot of these blanks that have a scale pattern built into the blank. Uh, a lot of times when we paint these we end up hiding or covering up the scale pattern that's on there. But I'm going to show you a cool trick how we can actually enhance that and if you want to incorporate it into your own paint jobs but first i want to say congratulations to edin the fisherman you won the giveaway so shoot me a message on instagram uh that way i can get your details and figure out where to ship this bait to you guys had a ton of awesome ideas you actually sparked a lot of excitement for me so i'm gonna do a whole series on some of your ideas thank you everybody that entered also gonna be doing some more giveaways here soon something else i wanted to say because a ton of people have asked for it or requested it uh, it's that little shad pattern i had mentioned it in one of my videos a while back i've almost got it done to where i'll have the free download for you guys and we'll do a building and a painting video for it uh, i'm hoping to get that done this week we'll see how it goes i'm just trying to make sure the pattern is as bulletproof as possible but with nothing else to say let's go ahead and paint this bait So like I said, we're just going to be using three different colors, the main color being this neon orange. Now in order to get the neon orange to be really bright and pop like it is in its can, we gotta do a base coat of white. So that's what I'm going to start off with, and then we'll do a full coat of the orange. I'm gonna hit it with the hair dryer, and then we'll do another quick coat of white. All right, next up is the neon orange. I'm gonna go over everything I just did with the orange and probably do a couple coats, that way we can get it up to that neon color. Now, I would say that is pretty well neon orange. I'm gonna make sure this is good and dry clean out the brush and then we're gonna move on to our black paint along with making some sort of little stencil for a pattern that we can do down the side similar to that of a crawl but it's not really going to be a crawl pattern just a cool feature of the bait so for this pattern I'm thinking it look kind of cool if they were like triangles going down the side so what I'm gonna do is bend this piece of cardstock is all it is in half and then I'm going to I know that this line right here is going to be the center so I'm just going to take my scissors and kind of cut it, trying to decide at how sharp of a triangle we want. I don't think I want it to be that sharp. So I'm just going to try cutting it like this first and seeing what that would look like. I actually think that uh, maybe a little bit sharper, just a little bit sharper. Yeah, I think that'll work. And then you can kind of almost have them overlapping. Okay, so we got our piece of cardstock and our pattern. We got our piece of cardstock cut to be our pattern. I'm gonna load up, it's just some opaque black in the paintbrush, and then we're gonna get to work laying this pattern down. Now I think I'm gonna start on this other side because it's a little bit easier to hold with my left hand and spray with my right. Uh, I'm gonna go just past the gill plate here, and I'm gonna try to, to make my life easier, I'm gonna line up the point of our stencil with the line going down the center of the bait. That way I can try to get it consistent on both sides. I'm going to start spraying over here on the stencil pattern and then work my way over. I don't want there to be, because I don't want there to be a ton of black from this on there. We're gonna be putting a bunch more black on later. So I'm trying to keep this as light as possible, but still being a solid black. So lined up with my line going down the center and I'm just past the gill plate. I think that works pretty good for me. Since I'm gonna be going this way with my pattern, I'm gonna hit that with the hairdryer and then we'll do the next one. I'm thinking about, I don't know, maybe two, three, maybe four altogether. It doesn't hurt to hit your stencil too when you're drying this. That way, if there's any paint on those edges, it's not gonna smear because we want the part covered up by the paper to be the solid orange. No smudges of black until later. We're trying to keep it pretty now and I'm gonna destroy it once I go to do this other part of the pattern. Let's see, that's right there. Let's go to about right there. Again, lined up with the center line of the bait. 
think I'm gonna go back and touch this spot up just so I want it to be a little darker. That'll work, doing the hairdryer. And then the tricky part is uh, trying to keep it about the same distance, which I'm thinking to be about right there. Pretty darn close. And then we're gonna squeeze one more on the end right here. So this one, I didn't quite get it to be a nice crisp orange. I might see if I can back this up just ever so slightly and try to fix that. Now I kind of got to darken everything up, but that's all right. Before I do the stencil pattern on this side, I'm gonna do the top. That way I have something to line up with. I'll have two points of reference, the center line, and then whatever this top line, wherever that ends up at, for whenever I'm doing the pattern on this side, I can just line them up and they'll be even. Trying to decide if it would look better to be a straight line or if I had it kind of like that. You know what I mean? I don't really know what that's gonna look like, but I think I'm gonna try that over the straight pattern. No, if it was straight, it'd be a lot easier to line them up. Oh, I don't know. Let's just do it straight. Cut, well, you guys, I can't decide. We're gonna do it this way, cause it's harder. It's the harder way. If it looks like junk, then you guys will know not to do it. But if it looks cool, you'll know to try it. All right, that's not bad. Not terrible. I'm also, you can see I didn't quite get it lined up. I'm not too worried about it actually because of what we're going to be doing later on. So I'm gonna repeat this all the way down. Not the cleanest, but again, we're gonna make it pretty dirty here in a little bit, so I'm not terribly concerned about it. I think what I might do is try to make some marks for myself to see where this is supposed to line up at, and then uh, then we'll come do this other pattern. So I really want this to line up on both sides. So I've kind of got myself some reference, reference points. I don't know how well it's actually going to to help me here, but you can't see them. There's some really small pencil lines on there. If it works, then you guys will know to give it a try yourselves. All righty, this bait is ready for our next little step. Now what I'm actually going to do is let this dry really well and then I'm gonna give it a couple nice coats of the Rust-Oleum clear coat because what I'm going to do is wipe a bunch of black paint on and then lightly wipe it off. That way the black paint will get caught down in the grooves of the bait. We're gonna get a really messy, grungy, like dirty look, but I think that's, I mean, that's exactly what I'm trying to do for this one. So up here on the front, normally I'll darken up with the eyes, with my airbrush, that kind of stuff. We're gonna let the messy part do that. I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. Again, letting this dry really well and then spraying it with some of the polyurethane clear coat. If you don't do the clear coat and you try to do this, most likely what's gonna happen is you're gonna wipe up your orange paint. Uh, the clear coats is going to help your water-based paint wipe off a lot easier, uh, just leaving it in the grooves as long as you're careful and gentle with it. So I'm going to let this sit out and dry for a little while. We'll come back after there's some clear coat on it and uh, finish it up. All right, so I gave this bait a couple coats of that clear coat, and I gave it plenty of time to dry. You can see it's a little bit more shiny than it was before. So what I'm going to do is I got just a transparent Createx airbrush paint. This one's actually pretty well empty, but I'm going to take this. I got a little paintbrush and I got a paper towel and I'm gonna brush it straight on there and then wipe it back off. You don't wanna wipe off very hard cause it will pull it out of those grooves. But if you do it real lightly, it's gonna leave the black paint down inside the pattern that's on the bait itself. Uh, it's a little bit tricky and like I said, it's gonna look messy, but that's okay because that's what we're wanting it to do. We'll start up here around the eyes. 
And I'm just going to do a little bit at a time. That way it won't dry on me. So you can see how it got that nice little, little dirty. But the part that's exciting is where the uh, actual scale pattern is. So it's just the process of putting it on, taking it off until you get the look that you're going for. I'm going to go ahead and go all the way down below the gill plate because the uh, little grooves in the bait in the blank go down that far. And then on a couple of these spots, I'm just going to use a little bit of water. Kind of try to wipe it up just a little bit more. So I'll get some uh, closer up shots of it, of course, like always after I get the clear coat on it. But you can see what I'm saying. It got the paint down inside all those little grooves. This is a pretty dramatic color difference, but uh, it might look pretty cool too if you were doing like a red instead of black or something like that. Uh, but for our purposes of showing it, black on a neon orange is a pretty good way of being able to see the two colors. All right, I think this bait is ready for some eyes. So I wish I had some solid black eyes. I don't have any that are solid black, but I got these which are black with a little bit of silver. I think that'll go nicely in there. A little dab of super glue. And this bait is ready for clear coat. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll see what she looks like. <laughs> 